Hello and welcome back again. We're doing two for one today on the tutorials. Now, this is a video request or a tutorial request on um, how I made this pair of earrings that I was wearing in another YouTube uh, tutorial that I did. Um, these anchor. Ones. Okay, so I I don't draw, don't know how to draw, so everything I do is based off of an image, so let's just get that out there, now that's the disclaimer. I don't know how to draw, so I, I know this is what I, I did, okay? So if you watch my previous tutorial that I made today, I, um talk about the print shop pro the jocks print shop pro program that i use Ooh, my side is hurting that's what i'm doing i'm sorry um that i use so what i did is i went online and i know i <clears throat> versace is really good at making those prints so what i did is i went online and i found the color print that i like let me see i have it pulled up here so um, that I like, you know, it had like the leopard print or zebra, or whomever, whatever print that you like. They have those prints mixed in with, you know, <clears throat> you know, some chain and other stuff like that. So I got the Versace print. So what I went on there is I found this dress. Okay. Now it doesn't look the same from here but if you look deep in it you can see the print of that dress in my earring and I copied the picture and I took the picture and put it on my print shop pro and made um just like a square rectangle or you know whatever and then I also went online and I found some anchor chain and I you know took out all the background of it and um, change the color of it to match gold. So what I did is I got these anchor wooden pieces out of my local Michaels. They were like uh, 50 cents or 60. It was under a dollar. And I painted them black using my um, apple barrel that I am so fond of. I get it out of Walmart. It's very inexpensive. That it well is like 50 cents, 60 cents. You want to get the one that's the high gloss that I would recommend for this project is a dollar, 97 cents. So it's a dollar. And then you just paint both sides of it. Okay? So then, after everything is dry, on both sides, the sides, the front part of it, you want to print out your image. So let me get my image. And this is not the same image. So we're going to print out the image. And this is the image that I have. I actually have another pair of earrings that I made that had the same image. So um, it had, I had did the uh, the portrait page. You know how when you buy pictures and it has like um, four, five by sevens on one page or some. A whole page of uh, what you call those things wallets or whatever like that so I took one of those and it had like this size on the page so I think it was like four of them on the page and I just filled the image with these because using my jocks print shop pro so for those of you who know about jocks print shop pro you can go in edit your pictures when you go to print out your pictures you can print it up in a template where you can do it uh, fill the image with uh, you know the different pictures so you can have half of it with these ones and the other half with something else if you want to you know making the earring or whatever you're making to be double sided <clears throat> so this is the image that I made so what I did is I took my anchor so uh, for this for this tutorial I'm going to just use this piece here and I did my tacky glue And just brush the tacky glue on top of the the image. I mean, on top of the uh, wood piece. Now they have two different sides of the piece, 
one is like kind of where you can see the grain a little more and then the other side is like a little bit more smoother depends on you you can use the rougher ends where the grain shows out more to attach to where you're going to put your image and leave this outside that's going to be where your um where you're going to touch your skin or whatever so what you want to do is you want to take your tacky glue and a paintbrush if you need it and just you know paint your tacky glue on there thin layer doesn't have to be really thick because the thick you got to think the thicker it is, the more messier it's going to be. So you don't want to have it all extra messy. You want to have it real thin. So you just want to, you know, line it with some tacky glue. Or if you have another glue of choice that you use and it works good for you, great. Use that. Take your image, you know, line it up to the, have the, what you're going to use to the back of your, um, so if you're going to use this end here, you're going to line that up to the back of your image and push it and let it sit, let it dry. Once you're done with it, you know, like this one, I had an X-Acto knife, but if you ha don't have necessarily this image and you have like something that's like a circle or a square or there's nothing that has all the curves and turns and all that, you can use some regular paper scissors and just cut around the, you know, cut around it once you get it in to the, you know, once you get it, once it adheres to the wood piece. So you just cut around the piece and then voila you're all set now once you cut the paper it's going to have those white edges along the sides like this here and you're going to see those coming off your wood piece unless you have a white base and that's great if you do but if not you want to you you take you um let's say a sharpie or a black marker or whatever and go around the edge real precise around the edge of that paper you know around the edge of this here so it mit or it, you know it blends with your uh, wood piece or whatever color you're using so if it's not black or blue or whatever color it is you want to get the marker to go along the edge of that and then also just to create a border you want to take the sharpie and just create a little border so you just want to draw a little line around the edge of it just so it'll create that border like I did on this one here so it looks like you know it blends into it so after you get all that done you know you take and you seal it in I use a uh, a sprayable Mod Podge on mine. I, I like the sprayable Mod Podge, so I use the sprayable Mod Podge. Or you could use any sealant, but I use the sprayable Mod Podge. And I don't have it on hand at the moment, but that's what I use. And then, of course, I let it dry. And then you want to, once you let this part dry, the top part dry, you want to do the back part. And you want to let it dry. And my the sprayable Mod Podge spray is pretty fast. I was looking to see if I had it around. But you know, Mod Podge is in a spray can. You spray it, whatever. It works fairly well. So, my daughter brought me to my... So, this is what I used. The clear acrylic sealer. And this goes a long... I've done a lot of projects with this. This goes a long way. So, you know, I spray both sides. And you want to do this outside in a well ventilated area because this stuff is strong super strong make give you a headache you catch a contact off of my pause and you know i use some jump rings just so i use two separate the thicker jump rings just because this is so big but you can also you know i don't know how you're comfortable you know and if you mess up you can break the top part of it but you can also you know pierce a hole through it or use like the little drill that you I got from my um what do you call it the uh epoxy you can use that as well so that's what I did to make this I have a wooden piece painted it with my apple barrel and it's just red an apple barrel that I got out of Walmart, but you can get these out of um, <clears throat> Michaels as well, or pretty much any craft store. These are the acrylic base paint, so this is what I used. Um, I also used a Sharpie, black, or plain black, or red, or whatever color you wanted to coincide with the color of your wood piece. 
I got a print, and this is actually photo paper. You see the Kodak on the bottom. I printed out a piece of paper, you know, I printed out my image, and I actually made this image, so I just got some lines or whatever, and then I uh, swirled it or whatever using some of the graphics on the Jocks Print Shop Pro. And you can use any print shop, you know, uh, print shop software that you have, or you know, if there's a just a, a particular image that you want to use or whatever, use that. You didn't have to go through like what I did with the um, Versace <coughs> print that I got off that dress and putting that in chain or anything like that. You could just use that plain thing that'll work just fine. Glue it to the wood and take your Exacto knife and trace it. All the way out. All the way out. And then you could take a little bit once everything is dry. You could take a little nail file, one of them cheap ones that you can get at the dollar store, the little um emery files, and just you know rub around the sides to clear that paper out. And then after that, go through it with the either with the a paintbrush, you can use the same um paint, go through the sides here. You know, making sure that you're covering up all the color of the actual paper so you won't know that it's paper. And then go along the edge of it with your Sharpie or if you want to do it with the paint or whatever. Go along the edge so it gives it like a little border. that make it look like it's blend, you know, it blends with the image around each one. And then seal it with your Mod Podge. And spray it. I say I sprayed this thing probably a good four times. Spray it, let it dry, spray it, let it dry, spray it, let it dry. I did that four times. And then the back I sprayed it maybe once because it, you know, it's it's not gonna really be seen that much. And if you want to do a double-sided image, you can do that as well. Just repeat what you did on the front on the back. And that's pretty much it with that one. It's very inexpensive. It's time consuming because you have to do all the painting, let it dry, business, and let it dry. You know, there's a lot of time where you're letting it dry. So, um, that's all you need. And you need two ear hook wires or, you know, you can do glue a stud on there and get one of the little bitty studs and glue the stud on it where it fits closer to the earring ear, or to your ear. Um, I have picked up some studs from off of um this website called fire mountain and they're like a two inch what was it two centimeter diameter or four centimeter diameter or whatever it is and that would fit right on the edge of this so you can either use get something you know that small and put it there and i'm sure they may sell those at your local uh, craft store as well like your michaels or your hobby lobby i'm not for sure but i i needed them <clears throat> and they were a little cheaper for that in particular project that I was using. So I got those. But you know, you can either use what you have or if you want to go out and get that, you know, go the place that I got it off of was called Fire Mountain. Fire Mountain Gym. But if you Google Fire Mountain, it'll pull up and then you'll get the uh The ear stud flat pad is uh, four millimeters. So this is what it looks like for those. It's a four millimeter. This little boy don't have on no coat. Mm -hmm. And this is how small it is. So it is super small and will fit right on the edge of this here and you know you can use your E6000 or super glue and nobody will never know that it's there and you can use that as a stud if you so choose to. I wouldn't get nothing bigger than this because I mean it literally is fitting right in the center of that. So you can use this to put on it and you're fine. And then you know you can buy some separate ear backs or like these. I got these little plastic pieces off of um eBay for like 10,000 of them for like a couple of dollars. I don't even remember how long because I've been having them for a while. And I've made hundreds of earrings and I still have hundreds more. So, <laughs> yeah, you can get those. And they also sell these at um, 
Hobby Lobby and Michaels and all those other places like that. But I got this in particular pack out of um off of eBay. And then I also got some uh the regular backs to it. I got those out of um hmm, I think Michaels with the coupon. So you know it's super easy. I'm not a drawer. If you know how to draw, have at it, do what you do. I don't draw. Don't know how to draw. Not about to learn how to draw. I found what works for me, and this is what I do. So I picked up an image off of a dress off of um, Google, printed it out. I print the image out. Here you go. This is the dress. I copied, I made two copies. I took my uh, anchor to the piece of paper, glued it to the back. Once it's using my Aline's clear gel tacky glue, I got this out of Hobby Lobby for $2.99, but Michael, uh, Walmart sells it cheaper. I let it dry. Once I was done with it, I took my X-Acto knife and I cut around the whole thing, you know, real precise. And then in the circle. Once I was done with that, and be careful because, you know, using your hands and stuff like that, it can kind of smear the image. So, um, if you want, you can use gloves or whatever, but just be careful and keep your hands super clean because, you know, with this being photo paper, it picks up everything. And then you might, if you want to, I don't know, but I haven't tried it, but you could probably spray a little bit of that um, adhesive on there, use some Mod Podge and, you know, the regular Mod Podge and put that on there as well first and then start working with it that may make it work better i don't know so if it don't work don't get mad at me but you know just experiment play with it um you know once you get done with that you will have your image it's gonna have the whites of the paper because you're gonna be you know you have already painted it whatever color you want get a um a marker or if you want a, a little small paintbrush and dip it into your your paint that you use and go along the edges of it just because you know you is that white is going to show up make sure you go th on the inside everywhere that you see that white i use the sharpie you could do the sharpie well no i take that back i use the sharpie to create my border i use the paint to go along the insides i use my um the paint that i paint use to paint my wood piece and then i use my sharpie for the border and so i just like got a small thin um tip sharpie and just went along the border of it match it you know and let all that dry sprayed it with my Mod Podge gloss about four times and I let it dry I sprayed the back about once or twice let it dry and then added my ear hook wires and my two jump rings the reason why I use two jump rings is because the space between I wanted it to the way I wanted it to sit I wanted it to sit like this versus my ear hook wire going to the side like that I wanted it to sit like this so when I put it on my ear my image will sit flat versus you know turning this way I wanted it to sit flat so you know to each his own but that was my method so that's what I got. And then I got, you know, some inexpensive hair hook wires. I get a lot of my stuff, you know, <clears throat> from Michaels or Walmart. Walmart has a, when you get little stuff like this, they have, you know, these pretty inexpensive and in as well as the jump ring, jump, not jump, um, yeah, jump rings. Because you can go to their little craft section where the jewelry is and pick up, you know, like, what do we get these six dollars for like a pack of a hundred ear hook wires and then they have a pack of jump rings the assorted size the small the medium and the bigger ones for like two dollars and it's like a hundred of them in their total or whatever it is but you know when you're going to get your groceries or your whatever you're going to get you can stop in there and get a couple of you know the ear hook wires and the jump rings and then go on about your day you don't have to make no special trips to the Walmart or to uh, Michaels or anywhere like that because where I stay I live in Georgia and I'm not 
in an area where they have like a Walmart up the street or whatever. I have to travel. So like my nearest Walmart, anybody familiar with um, Georgia, I live in Decatur. And my nearest Walmart all the way in Conyers or um, in Atlanta. I'm not Walmart. My local Michaels is all the way out in either Conyers or in um, in Atlanta. So, <clears throat> you know, that's a nice little distance. But Walmart everywhere. I can go up to Walmart real quick and pick up these little things like that. So it makes it a little easier. And if you don't have a Michaels or whatever near you, you can just, you know, go to your little Walmart. They sell photo paper. They sell um, Mod Pods. That's where I have this. Got this one from. It's from the Walmart. And then they also sell the other Mod Pods that you can paint on. They sell, um, they don't sell these. You do have to go to Michael's for these, but you can get other wooden pieces. It doesn't have to necessarily be an anchor. It could be, you know, the circle pieces I have, these. Also, the letters, you can get the letters out of there. Um, and they sell some other pieces, but for the anchor, you will have to go to your local Michael's or, you know. Um, does Hobby Lobby sell those? Okay, well, I think Hobby Lobby might even sell these little anchor pieces. I don't know. But that's pretty much all for this tutorial, I guess you can call it. Um, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment down below. And I'll try my best to try to answer any questions I have for you that I didn't cover here in this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.